Warren Buffett, at least for me, he is the greatest investor I've ever seen. The way he can explain things, the way he chooses stocks, how he profits from tough market conditions. I've never seen anyone like him and I think we best enjoy him while we can because I don't think we'll ever see the likes of him again. Now we're lucky because he's still alive in 2023 and we can still learn from him after all of his experience in the market. In this video, we'll go through nine investing tips on how to invest in 2023 the Warren Buffett way. In order to understand what to do in 2023, we first need to grasp, wait, what the heck happened in 2022? What? Stocks do not just continuously go up? A lot of investors had to learn this lesson the hard way. Warren Buffett throughout the years has taught us the key forces that make stocks go up and down. The central force is the interest rates. Warren Buffett famously said, interest rates are to asset prices what gravity is to the apple. When there are low interest rates, there is a very low gravitational pull on asset prices. And obviously, when interest rates are high, the gravitational pull is high. When gravity is high, it pulls down the apple. When interest rates are high, it pulls down the stock market. Now, who has been paying attention to the group that controls interest rates? The Federal Reserve and at the helm, Jerome Powell. What has he been doing with them? He has been increasing rates. They've gone from effectively 0% at the start of 2022 to 4.33% at the end of 2022. That is no measly rate hike. And according to Buffett's principle, what has this done to stock prices? It's brought them down because there's more gravity pulling on the stock prices. This is a key reason why prices are down and Powell has plans to keep raising rates in 2023. This may keep bringing stock prices down and we need to be prepared for this. Luckily enough, we have Buffett who has taught us throughout the years how to deal with falling stocks. Warren Buffett has kind of been the figurehead of value investing and value investors think completely different to most investors. Most investors see bread in the market, stocks going down and they panic and sell. A true value investor loves seeing stock prices go down. The reason is because stocks are pieces of businesses and you want to buy that business for as cheap as possible. Why would you want to pay more? In order for that to happen, you have to love it when the stock market crashes. As Warren Buffett says, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. Maybe now will be the time to be greedy. Anytime stocks go down, as far as I'm concerned, I like it because I'm a net buyer of stocks. I'm, I've been buying stocks ever since I was 11 years old. So uh, when stocks go down, it's good news. Just like when hamburgers go down, it's good news. Or Coca-Cola <laughs> goes down, it's good news in terms of anything I buy. You know, stocks are going to go down. You could probably look it up as to what percent of the days of the, you know, since I was born, they've gone down and maybe it'd be 30% uh, or something like that. And uh, you, you can't predict what stocks will do but in, in the short run, but you can predict that American business will do well over time. And just take the 20th century, stocks went from 66, the Dow average, 66 to 11,497. And, and you were getting three times as much in dividends as the whole average was selling for at the start. And you had, you had two world wars and you had a great depression, flu epidemics, all kinds of things. Uh, uh, American business will do fine over time. And if you own a piece of it, and if you don't beat yourself, the only, the only person that can cause you to get a bad result in stocks is yourself. One way that we can learn how to invest in 2023 is by looking at the stocks that Buffett bought in 2022, most recently. It gives us a view for what he's looking for in these types of market conditions. So three main purchases that Buffett bought last year in terms of the overall weight of his portfolio. He did buy a decent amount of stocks, but some of them were only worth 0.01% of the portfolio, and there's no use talking about those small purchases. Let's focus on his three biggest buys. His largest buy, from what we know so far, 
is Chevron, the oil company. This is worth 5.72% of his overall portfolio. The stock has a low PE and a nice dividend. His second largest buy was also an oil company, Occidental Petroleum. This was worth 3.3% of his overall portfolio. Again, a low PE, but also pays a dividend. So his two largest buys are oil companies. And then number three is a company that you kind of assume Buffett wouldn't buy, Taiwan Semiconductors. Remember, semiconductors are the essential component needed in technology like computers, phones, healthcare, etc. Buffett has always been famous for saying that he can barely understand technology or barely use his own phone. And he also likes to only invest in what he understands. So why is he investing in Taiwan Semiconductors? First of all, it could just be the investors under him, Ted or Todd, buying the stock. But another reason is Buffett also understands consumer behavior. He knows that people will continue to buy technology like phones, computers, cars, and they are going to need a company like Taiwan Semiconductors. Even in a recession, even in tough economic times, people will still be on their devices. I think it is a smart investment for this particular market that we're in to buy stocks that produce things that are needed in society and this is what Taiwan Semiconductors do. Again, this stock has a low PE of 13 and pays a bit of a dividend. So I'm sure you've noticed the pattern with these three stocks low PEs and slight dividends, and you may want to copy that strategy in 2023. It's fair to say that we are going through some tough economic times right now. The good and the bad thing about this is, well, the good is that the bad businesses get put out of business. Warren Buffett says, only when the tide goes out do you discover who's been swimming naked. This is good because society needs these businesses to stop functioning. We don't need bad businesses in the economy. But this is bad as well for anyone who actually chose to invest in these bad companies. So this is why it's so important, especially in 2023, to buy good quality businesses that are making products genuinely needed in society. These businesses are highly unlikely to be swimming naked and highly unlikely to get exposed in tough economic conditions like recessions. Buffett has done this throughout the years. He's bought good quality stocks like Coca-Cola, Apple, Kraft Heinz, Duracell. These are all high quality businesses. This is a rule that Kathy Wood forgot to learn, or well, maybe she never ever learned it. That is, rule one, don't lose money, and rule two, don't forget rule number one. Kathy Wood, she was doing amazing in 2020, 2021, as the stock market as a whole was going up. Innovation and high growth tech stocks were, was making everyone rich, or so they thought. In 2022, the economy started struggling, but the stock market struggled even more, and so too did those high growth tech innovation companies. And now, over the past five years, Warren Buffett is up 56%. He's overtaken Kathy Wood by miles, who is down 5.1%. Don't lose money, be conservative, and don't overpay for stocks. When you buy a horse, always make sure that that horse does not limp. Test it out, take it for a run, take it for a sprint. Can it jump over the bars? Wait, what am I talking about? This is an analogy for buying a business. Warren Buffett has told the story of a horse that limps when it comes to buying a business and to watch out for businesses with too much debt. Too much debt is like a horse that sometimes limps. It does fine in bull markets, but in bear markets, it gets found out. This is why before you buy a stock, you need to look at its balance sheet. For example, we look at Alphabet stock. So go on Yahoo Finance, go on Financials, and click on Balance Sheet. We can see that total debt is only $28.3 billion. If we look at their cash under current assets, they have $139 billion of cash on them right now. So, you know, cash compared to debt, is more than manageable. Alphabet are not a limping horse. However, 
If you look at another stock, let's say AT&T, that's different. AT&T has $150 billion of total debt and only $2.4 billion of cash on hand. This stock is a limping horse. They say that a fool is someone who knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. But how relevant is this to the investing world? Every day, fools are studying what the price stocks are selling for and seeing if they went down a percentage point or up one. Investors who follow Warren Buffett though are not overly concerned with price but they are very concerned with value. If you know the true value of a stock, then investing becomes a whole lot easier. You simply look at all of your investing options and you buy the stock that has a price way cheaper than its true value. This is basically what I do most days. I work out the true value of stocks by discounting the cash flow using the Warren Buffett method and all of my calculations are put in my investing group, the Investing Academy, which can be found in the link in the description. And to know the true value of a stock, it's actually not that complicated. It's not as complicated as people make it seem. Essentially what you have to do is you get the stock, you calculate the future cash flows and then you discount them back to the present day. For a full, very beginner, but detailed explanation, just watch this video here, which I'll also put in the description. Know the value of the stocks you own, and you won't have to panic about the prices going down. Warren Buffett, he's always done things against the grain. While most investors went to Wall Street to buy stocks, Warren Buffett stayed in Omaha. Most investors buy stocks often, Buffett, he barely makes a stock move. Most investors, they sell their stocks when they make a decent profit. Buffett hates selling and prefers to own his stocks forever. But most investors lose to the market and Buffett beats the market. It's just a completely different mentality, but it's important to have this different mentality to the average investor because the average investor does not perform well at all. They do terribly. If you find that you're regularly disagreeing with the crowd when it comes to investing, then it's probably a good thing. You need to think independently. One question that you may ask for 2023 is what asset class should I invest in? To answer that question, let's look at how the main asset classes have performed throughout history. So these are real returns, AKA it just means that they are adjusted for inflation. As we can see, by far the best performing asset was the stock market. They performed double the amounts bonds did and over six times the amounts gold did across 200 years. And the worst thing that you could have done is just held your money in cash because that would have been depreciated over time and eaten at by inflation. You would have actually technically lost money. But this, guys, is the reason why Buffett loves stocks. Because stocks are businesses, and businesses' main goal is to make you money. 